This is chapter two of Pippi Longstocking by Astrid Lindgren. Remember, Pippi is a girl who lives in Sweden, and she has just moved into a house all by herself because her father was lost at sea, although she's convinced that he washed up on an island somewhere and has become a king. And her mother died when she was a baby. So she lives all alone, and this is what Pippi might have looked like. She's got crazy orange-colored braids that stick out on each side, and a dress that she made herself that has some funny red patches, plus a pet monkey named Mr. Nelson. And this is chapter two of her story, called Pippi is a Thing Finder and Gets into a Fight. Annika woke up early the next morning. She jumped out of bed and ran over to Tommy. Wake up, Tommy, she cried, pulling him by the arm. Wake up and let's go and see that funny girl with the big shoes. Tommy was wide awake in an instant. I knew, even while I was sleeping, that something exciting was going to happen today, but I didn't remember what it was, he said, as he yanked off his pajama jacket. Off they went to the bathroom, washed themselves and brushed their teeth much faster than usual, had their clothes on in a twinkling, and a whole hour before their mother expected them, they came sliding down the banister and landed at the breakfast table. Down they sat and announced that they wanted their hot chocolate right at that very moment. What's going to happen today that you're in such a hurry? asked their mother. We're going to see the new girl next door, said Tommy. We may stay all day, said Annika. That morning, Pippi was busy making pepper kakor, a kind of Swedish cookie. She had made an enormous amount of dough and rolled it out on the kitchen floor. Because, said Pippi to her little monkey, what earthly use is a baking board when one plans to make at least 500 cookies? And there she lay on the floor, cutting out cookie hearts for dear life. Stop climbing around in the dough, Mr. Nelson, she said crossly, just as the doorbell rang. Pippi ran and opened the door. She was white as a miller from tip to toe, because of all that flour that got stuck to her. And when she shook hands heartily with Tommy and Annika, a whole cloud of flour blew over them. So nice you called, she said, and shook her apron. So there came another cloud of flour. Tommy and Annika got so much in their throats that they could not help coughing. What are you doing? asked Tommy. Well, if I say that I'm sweeping the chimney, you won't believe me you're so clever, said Pippi. Well, the fact is, I'm baking, but I'll soon be done. You can sit on the wood box for a while. Pippi could work fast, she could. Tommy and Annika sat and watched how she went through the dough, how she threw the cookies onto the cookie pans and swung the pans into the oven. They thought it was as good as watching a circus. Done, said Pippi at last, and shut the oven door on the last pans with a bang. What are we gonna do now? asked Tommy. I don't know what you are going to do, said Pippi, but I know I can't lie around and be lazy. I am a thing finder. And when you are a thing finder, you don't have a minute to spare. What did you say you are? asked Annika. A thing finder. What's that? asked Tommy. Well, somebody who hunts for things, naturally. What else could it be? said Pippi, as she swept all the flour left onto the floor into a little pile. The whole world is full of things, and somebody has to look for them. And that's just what a thing finder does, she finished. What kind of things? asked Annika. Oh, all kinds, said Pippi. Lumps of gold, ostrich feathers, dead rats, candy snap crackers, little tiny screws, and other things like that. Tommy and Annika thought it sound as, sounded as if it would be fun and wanted very much to be thing finders too, although Tommy did say he hoped he'd find a lump of gold and not a little tiny screw. We shall see what we shall see, said Pippi. One always finds something, but we've got to hurry up and get going 
so that other thing finders don't pick up all the lumps of gold around here before we get them. All three thing finders now set out. They decided that it would be best to begin hunting around the houses in the neighborhood because Pippi said that although it could perfectly well happen that one might find a little screw deep in the woods, still the very best things were usually found where people were living. Though for that matter, she said, I've seen it the other way around too. I remember once when I was out hunting for things in the jungles of Borneo, right in the heart of the forest where no human being had ever before set foot, what do you suppose I found? Why, a very fine wooden leg. I gave it away later to a one-legged old man, and he said that a wooden leg like that wasn't to be had anywhere else for love or money. Tommy and Annika looked at Pippi to see just how a thing finder acted. Pippi ran from one side of the road to the other, shaded her eyes with her hands, and hunted and hunted. Sometimes she crawled about on her hands and knees, stuck her hands in between the pickets of a fence, and then said in a disappointed tone, Oh dear, I was sure I saw a lump of gold. May we really take everything we find? asked Annika. Yes, everything that's lying on the ground, said Pippi. Presently, they came to an old man lying asleep on the lawn outside his cottage. There, said Pippi, that man is lying on the ground and we have found him. We'll take him. Tommy and Annika were utterly horrified. No, no, Pippi, we can't take an old gentleman. We couldn't possibly, said Tommy. Anyway, whatever would we do with him? What would we do with him? Oh, there are plenty of things we could do with him. We could keep him in a little rabbit hutch instead of a rabbit and feed him on dandelions. But if you don't want to, I don't care. Though it does bother me to think that some other thing finder may come along and grab him. They went on. Suddenly, Pippi gave a terrific yell. Well, I never saw the like, she cried as she picked up a large rusty old tin can from the grass. What a find, what a find! Cans, that's something you never can have too many of. Tommy looked at the can doubtfully. What can you use it for? Oh, you can use it in all sorts of ways, said Pippi. One way is to put cookies in it. Then it becomes a delightful jar with cookies. Another way is to not put cookies in it. Then it becomes a jar without cookies. That certainly isn't quite so delightful, but still, that's good too. She examined the can, which was indeed rusty and had a hole in the bottom. It looks almost as if this were a jar without cookies, she said thoughtfully. But you can put it over your head and pretend that it is midnight. And that is just what she did. With the can on her head, she wandered around the block like a little metal tower and never stopped until she stumbled over a low wire fence and fell flat on her stomach. There was a big crash when the tin can hit the ground. Now, see that, said Pippi, and took off the can. If I hadn't had this thing on me, I'd have fallen flat on my face and hurt myself terribly. Yes, said Annika, but if you hadn't had the can on your head, then you wouldn't have tripped on the wire fence in the first place. Before she had finished speaking, there was another triumphant cry from Pippi, who was holding up an empty spool of thread. This seems to be my lucky day, she said. Such a sweet, sweet little spool to blow soap bubbles with or to hang around my neck for a necklace. I'll go home and make one this very minute. However, just at that moment, the gate of one of the cottages nearby opened and a boy came rushing out. He looked scared and that was no wonder because head over heels after him came five other boys. They soon caught him and they pushed him against the fence and all five 
began to punch and hit him.